If a government records two consecutive quarters of decline in gross domestic product, or GDP, then a country is in recession. The GDP is essentially a scorecard of a country's economic health. It measures the value of all goods and services produced in Australia, and that's usually over a three-month or 12-month period. My name's Jay Pace. I'm one of the directors of a nationwide buyers agency and research firm known as Providence Property Group. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with how a buyers agent saves you time, money, and reduces stress, here's a short explanation. Instead of taking on the monumental and sometimes risky journey of buying a property by yourself, Providence acts as your representative and expert consultant when buying a property. We focus on three main areas, locating your ideal property, that's on and off market, uh, looking at the state, the city, the suburb, the street, the structure. Next, we look at the assessment of that property itself, its pros, its cons, the build quality, the owner-occupier appeal, the layout, the use of space, supply and demand, distance to amenities, etc. Finally, we negotiate for the best price on the most attractive terms. Our objective is to purchase your ideal property at the optimal time for the best price. And we all know that knowledge is power, but un unfortunately in Australia, when it comes to buying property, we spend too much time searching and not enough time researching. On Wednesday the 3rd of June, the Treasurer of Australia, Josh Frydenberg, announced that the Australian economy shrank by 0.3% of a percent, and that was during the January to March quarter. Primarily this is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He also warned that the, the April to June quarter will be far more severe. So there are your two consecutive quarters of GDP decline, the recession is officially on. The main symptoms of a recession which the average Australian will witness are less jobs, and that's a result of employers contracting their businesses, lower wages, when demand for employees decreases, so will salary spending, reduced spending. If you're making less money, you're gonna be spending less yourself. And finally, possibly more debt. With cash flow decreasing and costs continuing to stay the same, there is a higher probability of needing to borrow. The 2020 recession is not a surprise to many Australians, and Providence has spoken about this in our previous videos. Downturns are a part of the property cycle. If you're unfamiliar with the property cycle, watch our head of research, Simon Harris, explain how property cycles work in our YouTube video. Our economy definitely struggled through most of 2019, a lethal combination of record household debt, the weakest wage growth on record, serious underemployment, and tepid inflation forced the Reserve Bank to cut rates multiple times. Between June and October, the RBA cut rates three times, from 1.5% down to 0.75%. Now, with today's official unemployment rate at 6.2%, we still have a long way to go before we reach the 1992 or previous recession um, levels of 11.2% unemployment. Many of you watching will remember the recession that we had to have. This was in 1991. And the slowdown actually began in the first half of 1990, and the economy actually started to shrink in the second half of that year. Officially, the recession ended about a year later with the economy beginning to grow again in September quarter of 1991. Now, if you look back at this chart, it will show you that in 1991, the story was similar to now. Most of the pain was loaded into just one quarter and the one that followed barely ticked into the red. Like every asset, property is not bulletproof. However, historically, it's more resilient in times of recession and global pandemics than shares. And we've covered this in many examples in our previous market outlook video, we looked at the 87 stock market crash, the 97 Asian financial crisis, the 2001 dot-com bubble, and of course the GFC in 2008. Now, this chart shows you historic periods of decline to recovery of property in Sydney. Now, we can see in red, uh, the most drawn out decline coincides with our last recession, almost 30 years ago, in fact, for a duration of less than two years. During this time, the Sydney property declined by an average of 9.6%. But remember, there are markets within markets. Sydney as a whole may have experienced a decline, but I can guarantee you that there were suburbs during the recession which increased in value. We have many examples of resilient suburbs outperforming the market during these times. And this historical performance is actually one of the many indicators that we use when evaluating opportunities for our clients. 
Now, do we believe that the Australian economy will recover quickly? Yes, we do. Uh, have we been securing great property for our clients during this time of uncertainty? Most definitely. There's lots of examples on our website. Providence actually made a name for itself during the GFC. It was some of the best buying opportunities that we've ever seen, and our outlook has not changed. But if you want a deeper exploration of the reasons why we are confident that this will see a quick rebound, you've got to watch our 2020 Outlook video, which we posted on YouTube in April. Now, I'd like to add one more piece of new information that's come to uh, come to mind since this announcement. And Australia's performance in the March quarter compares actually very well to that that we see in other nations with negative growth in China um, at 9.8%, France 5.3%, Germany 2.2%, uh, United Kingdom 2%, and the United States at one3 What I'm just trying to say here is that the sky isn't falling we will see a faster recover than recovery than most of the other OECD countries. Now, the big question on everyone's lips, do I buy property during a recession? Well, let me start by saying that you should never take on more debt than what you are able to manage. But that being said, if you have had stable employment during COVID-19 and you're confident that your circumstances will remain basically unchanged, this will be the best period to acquire property in your lifetime. And let me explain why. There's less competition from other buyers, and that means that it is a true buyer's market at the moment, okay? More willingness to negotiate from other sellers, and the numbers show that more than 70% of properties that are going to auction are actually sold prior to auction at the moment. So people definitely are open to negotiation. Next, we've got the lowest interest rates in history, and that will assist owners with serviceability. Lastly, and this is a little bit of a controversial point, increasing demand for rental property. Now, let me just quickly explain this. After the GFC, rental yields in Australia, well, Sydney specifically, actually jumped up almost um, to over 9%. Now, this was a direct result of more people postponing their home purchases and continuing to rent because they just weren't confident with the market at the time. So because of that, there was more demand for rental property. Now, a big factor though here is going to be our international migration numbers. So we're gonna to have to watch and see how they affect the rental market very closely as the months go by. If we compare where we are today to our last recession, our property market is certainly higher. In fact, over 25 years up to 2018, Australian dwelling values increased by an average of 6.4% per annum, 6.8% uh, for houses and 5.9% for units. Now, it, it's important to understand that if you have purchased a quality asset at a fair price, time in the market can be more important than time in the market. Okay, and it sounds simple, but I, I know many people who have owned property for decades and they've not seen any increase in price. And this is because they purchased inferior property. And I can testify that the number one cause of this is because they were trying to save money and they purchased cheap property. Um, the property might not have been cheap, but the suburb was cheap or one of those reasons, but they just weren't willing to spend the additional funds. Let's look at an example here. Now, the median dwelling value in Sydney in 1991 was $182,000. Um, if I only had a time machine and if I was only a little bit younger. Um, with, with an average increase of 6.4% per annum over 25 years, uh, we can actually see that it brings the property's value today to $897,000. Now, it's important to note that I have only shown you the capital growth. I'm, I'm not even presenting you with the rental yield, the income that you would have received on this property as well, which would have been at least another 5%. You know people that own property or bought property and held it during previous economic crises. You know people that, that had a property, probably before the last recession, and they went through the GFC, the World Trade Center attacks. They went through the dot-com bubble. They've gone through all those things, and the properties made significant money for them. Now, I think it's important to note that in 1991, the standard variable loan rate was almost 230% higher than what it is today. And the RBA cash rate was 11.5%. Now that's four and a half thousand percent higher than the current rate today at 0.25. So the RBA has confirmed that 
interest rates will remain um, at record lows until unemployment reaches desired target levels. Credit has never been this cheap. Now, this chart shows you CoreLogic's Home Value Index, and I've circled in yellow the rebounds that followed after major economic turbulences, starting with our last recession. Now, we believe that this crisis will be short-lived, and we will bounce back faster than we did during the GFC. By mid-2021, most countries will return to free movement of people, and that's probably going to be post-vaccine for this virus. Infrastructure delivery will be fast-tracked, jobs are going to rebound across all sectors, and the virus will no longer be a threat. Now, we will see positive improvements in asset values, but none more so than those underpinned by land. And this has been the case for every crisis and cycle that has existed prior to this one over hundreds of years. And we expect this current crisis is actually going to lay the foundation for an even stronger real estate cycle in mid-2021 and 2020 to 2024. Now we've got tons of video on YouTube with tips, tricks, and research that I encourage you to use for your own self-education, but also to help your, um, your, your family make sure that they learn and understand what's going on. And remember, procrastination and fear comes from lack of knowledge. And in order for you to take action, you need confidence, and confidence comes from knowledge. Now we've got videos on the challenges facing retirement. Um, importantly, knowing when to buy and sell is not worth as much as knowing where to buy. So we've got a three-tiered um, research methodology which has allowed us to return above average results for our clients for over 14 years now. And if you'd like a sneak peek at our purchasing criteria, again, I recommend you go to YouTube or our website, have a look at some of our videos there. Australia is no doubt facing difficult times ahead. And if you can take advantage of these opportunities though. Do not put your head in the sand, all right? We always tell our clients that you make your money in a boom, but you build your empire in a downturn. And we're here to help people build empires. Thank you for your time today. I hope this has been educational. We look forward to working with you in the future.